I'm going to call uh, an individual that I've known for a long time. I'm going to ask Ron uh, if you'd come, Ron. And uh, uh, actually, you know what? You might as well step up. We'll we'll get up here right away and. This is uh, a good friend from many years ago, and um, I don't know, and I, I hope we're ready. We're not yet. I'm not on. I got this mic. Oh, Ron. Okay, they're just giving some technical. Just if we can turn, I'll put it on for you. Um, check is that good? Two. Yeah. Check, right. check. Still it on. Okay. So... We've been doing uh, these Power Sundays, and the reason that uh, we're calling it Power Sunday is because of the power of God to change a life. And uh, so, so Ron has. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out how God has changed uh, Ron's life, and especially in the last uh, uh, year, especially huge changes that have taken place. And uh, I. I want you to be encouraged because sometimes uh, you think, well, is God able to do a work? Because I've tried so hard. I've tried so hard on my own. Is God able to do a work? And I, can he change? Can he make something new uh, out of something that's broken? I appreciate Andrew and his uh, uh, the, this choice of songs today. So much of the grace of God and and. Uh, that one song, speaking of, of mending that which is broken. And uh, so we'll see uh, as we, we take some time together. And um, I just want to, as we begin, and, and Ron, welcome uh, here. And it's uh, good to have you here. And, and uh, uh, just, a, just a quick question. Uh, how, how long have we, we known each other? I can remember you since the church on Morrison in Niagara Falls, Ontario. I was still in high school. So you're, you're not in high school anymore. You're a few, a few years older. So uh, that was a long time. And I, I don't want to, I, I know Ron looks quite young and handsome. And uh, so I, I don't want to, but we're talking, uh, I think it was the early 80s uh, or late 70s that we, that we first met. And... Um, uh, so, and I don't know, how, how did you get to uh, the church? We weren't at this location. We were downtown. And uh, so how did, how did you get there? Well, many years ago when I went to the church on Morrison, Niagara Falls, I was still in high school, and uh, I wasn't quite faithful. I left the church. I believe pride got my way. And through the years, I... Uh, did many, a lot of traveling. And I noticed the church on Morrison was closed up. And I always wondered, whatever happened to the church of God? And one day, many times I drove by here and I seen the church of God. And I thought, I wonder if that's the same one as the one that was in Niagara Falls. And for this, in my heart, I believe, I really believe it's the Holy Spirit. I happened to come in here one day and I believe I, I met your brother, Andrew. And I thought, hey. Andrew's here. I wonder if Dave's here. You weren't the pastor. I believe it, if you were then. And uh, I came in, and I seen a few of the people that I knew from the church on Morrison, and uh, I was quite amazed how big this is, because we had a very small church. And I started coming back, and till then, it's, it's, I've been coming back, and I'm very comfortable. So, so you were just, uh, um, no, I was just, I think it was about four or five years ago, but you mentioned that you had been at the church back on, on Morrison Street, and uh, that, that was uh, a, sm a, a church downtown. And uh, how did you get to that church? Did you just come on your own? Did you come with somebody else? Like, why, why was it that you, you uh, came to the church down on Morrison? Oh, I, that's easy. I used to trim around with Wally DL. We were friends many years ago. And uh, him and I... Uh, in those days, we weren't very faithful. We went to church, but we just went through the motions. And Wally and I, we used to go roller skating in Crystal Beach. And through the years, uh, we uh, we hung around together. And 
and eventually we all went our separate ways. And I, like I said, I left the church for quite a while. I, uh, I didn't think I needed the church. But uh, as I moved to Niagara Falls and I stayed here permanently, as I came by here many times, I, I, I just had this feeling that this was a church on, from Morrison and I kept coming and sure enough, this is uh, the new church of God. So <clears throat> your, uh, your life before, um, and sometimes we, we talk about church as if church uh, can save and I, I want to make it clear right now that church does not save anybody. Attendance in church does not save anybody. And, and we, we need to recognize that uh, the, the efforts and the works that we do uh, do not allow us or, or give us a free passage to heaven. Um, the other day we were, we were just talking and, and your life was not necessarily... Uh, an easy life, and, and you, were sh you were just sharing, and uh, some of the things about your, uh, your life, even as a, a, a young boy, and um, your parents, uh, did you grow up in a Christian home, like, or was, uh, what were your, what was your life at home for the first five or six years or so? Oh, we lived in Welland at the time, and by no means, I did not grow up in a Christian home, we quite rough. My parents were, they smoked and drank a lot. Uh, but through the years, uh, my parents died young. My dad was, I'd say, 52. My mom was 47. I saw my mom. So, so your, 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 your dad passed away at, at 52. Yes. Yeah. Your mom was 47, 47. when she passed away. Yeah. And um, um, so here you were, uh, it wasn't like you're an adult at that point. You were you were still a child, and so so what happened uh, after like your dad passed away first, or yes. and uh, you, um, and then your mom. So what happened after that point? Because you were you were six, seven, eight years of age at that point. What happened? That's correct. I was quite young. I was in grade school. I remember that. And uh, my oldest brother Rob, he he was okay. He was he worked at. I believe it was Leon's, he was the oldest, but he couldn't take us in. So eventually we moved into a pastor and his wife in Welland on Rice Road, Pastor Heidman, very beautiful people. And we lived there temporary, it was for a year. And so, so you went from uh, a home where, where you didn't go to church, you, you, there were often times where uh, you said your parents were involved in, in uh, the, the, that sort of that, that party life, that uh, harder life. So you went from that to, to going into a, a, a pastor's home. I, I, do you know how, how it happened or you were too young to remember or, or how did you get to that place of being in the pastor's home? It's a good question. Being as young as we were, my two oldest brothers, that'd be Rob and Timmy, uh, they were old enough to go on their own. My youngest brother, Kenny, and I, uh, by the grace of God, we moved, when we moved in with the pastor and his wife, they had two boys also. And uh, we uh, lived in Rome. Like, did, your, did your mom or dad know the pastor and his, his I wife? I do not think so. No, I don't think they did. So for whatever reason, uh, and this, this is what I find amazing, is, is how God uh, works things out uh, despite you being able to control anything or, or have any say in it as a child uh, to end up in a, in a pastor's home. And uh, so, so what, what was that like, uh, being in, living in a pastor's home for about a year? It was quite different. Uh, I remember every Sunday morning, or actually every morning, my, the pastor, he would come down and read from the Bible. <laughs> my youngest brother wasn't too keen on the Bible, but um, I'll never forget the one passage he read. It was about Shamrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they were went through the fire and how the Lord brought them through that. And I was always very much open to when he talked 
questions about the Bible. And it's funny, I can remember my youngest brother saying, Ronnie's going to be a preacher. <laughs> Though I'm not. But uh, till this day, I still love hearing the word of God, yes. So uh, you were there for a year, getting exposure, uh, I guess, to the, to the word of God, to the things of God. Um, so what happened after you, you got out of the, or you left, or it was, you weren't there at the, uh, with the pastor and his, his family uh, anymore. So where did you go after that? Oh, I remember very clearly. They, they let us know that we had to move and we were going to be going into a foster home. And I thought, okay, well, a few months went by and we, I kept asking, please let us stay here. I don't want to, you get attached to when you're in a nice home. So eventually they drove my brother and I to Chippewa. As a matter of fact, my foster home's just about five doors down on Lions Creek Road. And I prayed, I said, let it be a big, beautiful home. It wasn't a big, beautiful home. It was the most ugliest house on the street. <laughs> so that was the foster home I moved in. And uh, so how, how long were you there for? Oh, I was there till I was 17. So probably around 10 years or oh, so? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so growing up in, in high school, um, what, what was... How, how was life? What, what was was high school a positive experience? Was it, uh, or usually high school can be a, a difficult time, uh, or it can be a, a a time of ups and downs uh, along the way. But what was was high school like? High school was it was quite different. Uh, it was rough being in a foster home. When they found out you were in a foster home, they looked down at you. Many times I was mocked i was you could say i was quite the nerd there but i my mom i promise she said whatever you do get your grade 12 and try to see the world and i did i got my grade 12 early and i did i traveled not the whole world but i did travel a lot and uh i made it through my grade 12 i was honored early i got it was a trade school lord alvin and i enjoyed it very much so so uh would you say, hey, I was, a, I was a good kid in high school? Like, what were, what were some of the things? Uh, uh, what, was, what was high school life like, maybe outside of the academics? Uh, or what were some of the, the, the things that you sort of remember about high school? I was going to quit grade 10, actually. It was getting rough. And, uh, so so rough, in, rough in what way? Well... I wasn't concentrating. I didn't think I could make it to grade 12. And uh, for some reason, I stuck it out. Actually, I went out many times and I, I'd get together with some of my friends and party. And eventually I, uh, I thought, no, I promised my mom I was gonna get my grade 12. But what really changed me is I joined this drama club. <laughs> and uh, it was a Red Skelton scene, I, I believe I told you. It was called the Badlands of Ballyhoo. <laughs> I was the sheriff. And I'll tell you, I did, I remember I didn't tell you this, so I did a solo. I played the guitar at the end, and the song I did was Dust of the Wind by Kansas. When we were done this play, it was about a 45 minute play. I was the most popular kid in high school. So I, that's why I believe I got my grade 12 early. And it was great, it was great. So, so you went from uh, having some struggle, but being part of the, the drama club, uh, there was this, this rise to popularity. Uh, I, I guess uh, uh, high school uh, is, is not an easy thing, and, and oftentimes it's the, the thing of popularity. Uh, if you're popular, it makes life a little bit easier in high school, uh, supposedly. Uh, so. You had mentioned you were sort of getting into the, the party scene. Like, what, what was that entailing uh, in, in high school? Like, what, what were the things that you were, you would be doing at a party? Oh, yeah. When you're in high school, especially a trade school, that was a th the end thing, to go out and party, especially on the weekends. That's what you did. You partied. You went out and drank. And I never smoked, but I did do 
quite a amount of drinking and and uh, that's what you did. Um, many of my friends didn't get their grade 12 because they were didn't have the credits. So I was privileged to uh, get my pred credits early. I uh, stuck to it. And I, yeah. So you, you finished high school. Uh, and you started working, or what? Like, what did you what did you do after high school? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, is to turn. I got my grade 12 early with honors because being a trade school, they uh, they got me a job on Victoria Avenue. It was called One Hour Dry Cleaners, and it was, it was a three month program. And I uh, I worked Monday to Friday. I'll never forget. I made 102.85 a week. That was big money then. And uh, eventually. When I, before I turned 18, uh, I only got a check of $12 a month, and they wanted like $500 a month. So after I got my grade 12, they wanted this rent money. I said, oh, I, I don't want to pay that. So I did get another job, of course, in the dry cleaners. And uh, I moved out, and I moved on Culp Street to a rooming house, and I was there for many, many years. And uh, after that, I uh, I had it very nice. I mean, it was still rough times. I moved to Alberta for a while, and I was out there for five years. I'd come back, and uh, I had some friends that came out with me, but they didn't stay. They more or less stayed, stayed at home. They like to stay at home. Huh? Now, it was either at the end of, of high school uh, or just shortly after, um, you mentioned your, your friend, Wally, and I, I remember, uh, I know Wally, um, his mother, Iris, had uh, um, come to know the Lord, had given her life to the Lord, and there were changes that were taking place, and I can remember her coming to church. Uh, this was back I think in the, the late 70s, early 80s, began coming to church. There's changes taking place in her life. And I know that impacted her, her children. And uh, so I, I, I can remember uh, her kids coming to church. And uh, uh, so you came along with Wally uh, at that point. Did, do you remember... Uh, making a commitment to the Lord back at that, in that time, or, or uh, asking the Lord to come in your life, or was it just, hey, my friend's going to church, I'm going to come along with them. Uh, do you remember any, anything about the, those early days? Oh, yes. When I, when I hung around with Wally, I met his mother, and in those days, remember, that's many moons ago, we all drank, even Iris and I, we, we all did the drinking and uh, Iris started going to church and uh, it was beautiful what a change in her and she said why don't you try it and eventually Wally and I his brothers we started it was a church on Morrison we started going there and we we, uh, we all we did quit drinking we our our other ways and and uh, Eventually, I like I said, I left the church. I believe it was pride, and uh, I never sorry, went sorry. back. Sorry, what, what, what was it that, that caused you to? I to believe it, I just didn't think I needed church anymore. I thought I, I thought I, I can do it on my own. I, uh, but through the years, I found out it was a bad mistake. But yeah, it's amazing what pride can do. I didn't even know what pride was at the time. So, 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 pride. This thing of pride was saying, hey, listen, I don't need God. I can do life on my own. So you are now in your late teens, early 20s, and there's this point of, I'm, I'm going to walk away from the, the ways of the Lord, the things of God. And uh, so what was life like for the next number of decades? Because I remember you from so long ago and then there was this period of time where I did not see you and uh, uh, what what was happening what what would you say hey this things were were great uh, I don't know 
you're, you're doing life on your own at this point. So what, what was it like? Well, when you're out on your own, you think you know it all. I, I always had work. I always worked. But I went right back into my old sinful habit, going to the bars all the time. The weekends were the bar scene, getting up. And, of course, in those days they had karaoke. And then they had a talent contest, go up with the band and play rock and roll or country. And, and I did it many, many years. And it, after a while, it, it got tiring. And I, uh, I, I thought to myself, I thought, you know what? I really, I miss church. There was just nothing... It was emptiness, and I thought, maybe I should go back. And a few people that I did know at the time that went to church, they said, you know, Ronnie, um, I, I've done that. I've been there where you are, and I've listened to many people, their testimonies, and I thought, maybe I'll try it again. And uh, I started coming here. And, of course, the same going through the motions, I'm thinking... And I still didn't give up. I mean, I didn't drink like I used to, but I still, on my being on my own, I, I still would go out and, and uh, go to the bar just to get out and be social. But that was my social life then. And uh, it's just empty. You go home, you're alone. I probably have to drink some more, drink myself to sleep. And just, I just started praying again to my, on my own and, Eventually, this is the church I started coming to, and more and more, I, I talked to you and the elders, and, and uh, eventually, I started feeling there's, this is so much more better than the life it's, that I was living. It's, it, you still have your thoughts, well, it's so easy to, to go back in your old ways, and it's uh, hard to give up your flesh, but I've learned through the years to be strong. Faith is a very strong thing to uh, have faith. I've learned over the years, um, reading, reading really has brought me a long way. I may not understand a lot of things that I'm reading, but uh, as I read more and more, there's more things I understand now than I did before, which is very, very helpful. So, so you, you had this struggle with, with alcohol. Which probably would you say that it, it consumed a large part of your life, uh, the thing of alcohol? Oh yes. And and I because I know that alcohol can be an extreme um, a thing of, of bondage, and it's it's almost like I I want to to get out of the situation and I can't. And uh, would you say? That this this thing of uh, of a, a bondage or a chain or the thing that could find you in alcohol, uh, were you able to overcome this by yourself? Oh no, you can never do it on your own. You, uh, I phoned many people and asked for prayer because this alcohol. I don't know if it's worse than smoking. I never smoked. But alcohol, it's, it's a, you're in another world. It, it's a time where uh, you just forget everything, but the next day it's still there. And the worst thing is you, you feel terrible. You don't eat right. You don't think right. And uh, it's, uh, it's a pastime. But uh, eventually, I know many friends uh, that died of cirrhosis of the liver. So I thought to myself, oh, I don't want to die. I, I want to live. So that uh, came to my mind. I thought, oh, no, this is not right. And, and I believe, I very much believe, I've told you this past, uh, the Holy Spirit is so good. When he convicts you, it's, it's a different than any human can convict you. It's, it's within your heart. You just know this is different. And that's when I, I thought to myself, this is the Holy Spirit talking to me, and so I, um, I'd come more and more, and I'd, the more I'd call and talk to elders or yourself, and I thought, this is, I feel good. It's, it's a challenge. It's, it's not easy. Like Jesus said, you're going to go through trials and tribulations, and, uh, but it's well worth serving the Lord than serving man. I, I know that very much so in my heart. 
Um, a lot of times uh, we attempt to, to, to um, pull ourselves out of a situation. We attempt to, to uh, try this, we'll try that, we'll try this. Uh, and whether it's, it's our own efforts or whether it's there's a dependence on others to a certain extent, well, maybe this uh, group or that session or, or sometimes it's even church. You know, if I, if I come to church enough, uh, maybe that will help. And not to say that, that churches uh, can't help. However, um, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, would you say, and you sort of alluded to the Holy Spirit, uh, would you say that there is help that is coming from not just a human uh, source, uh, uh, but it would be a thing that is from God, that God is helping you in this, uh, this what should I say, this getting out of this bondage of alcoholism? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, I know many times I've tried on my own to quit drinking. Um, but with my prayer and sincerity with the Lord, you can't, you can't fool God. I know that I've tried many times thinking, oh, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. But um, I've learned through the years, oh, the power of prayer. If you're sincere with God and you truly... Get, I, I never used to talk about pride. I'd never go on my knees. But uh, it just comes a time in a person's life you got to say, man, make up your mind. It's either this or that. So I said, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I got on my knees and I said, this is here. This is where I am. Take me or <clears throat> bless me. And I fasted and prayed. And God has been with me. And I'm... When God says you're free, you're free indeed. It's not easy, but I'm I'm there. I'm doing it, and I'm making it. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I find it, because uh, I've seen this again and again in different people's lives, uh, not to say that we don't have temptations. God never said that we wouldn't have temptations, but he said with the temptation uh, that there is there would be nothing that we couldn't bear and that he would make a way of escape and he would help us through it. Uh, a, a lot of times we, we, we want to fight even the temptations on our own. And uh, the Lord is saying, I want to help you. In the end, you have a decision to make. Yeah, this way or that way, do this or not, a drink or no drink. But if our faith is in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is made available to us to help us uh, to overcome. And... Uh, now, I, I want to make a distinction uh, be, between uh, that which is of religion, uh, being religious, and that which is of relationship. And I, so, would you say that you have a relationship with God? That you you know God, or is it just a is there a relationship with God? Today, yes, there is. Before, like I said. I know many people that go to church and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, I went through the motions, you go and, uh, but now when I come, I'm here to really listen to the word. Um, it's easy to go, to go to church and go through the motions, but it's not the same if you're sincere and truly listen to the word. And uh, I believe in prayer and reading the word because like we, you preach about this, not just saying, but doing the word. A lot of times we, we make uh, prayer or reading the word of God uh, to be more of a, at times, a ritual. We can just go through the motions. Uh, uh, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and just regurgitate it or whatever, not even realizing or recognizing what it is. But I like to, to think, and I know, that prayer is, is not just uh, a ritualistic uh, prayer or whatever, but it is communication with God, is, is speaking with, with the Lord, uh, spending time with Him. When, when we read the Word of God, uh, it is the Lord 
that it speaks to us through his word. And not just through his word, the Lord can speak into our hearts and into our lives and into our minds. Uh, he can speak to us as we are still before him. And uh, so there, there's a thing of relationship. So just as we would have time with somebody else, getting to know them, we can get to know God. And uh, um, I don't know, I, I, do you know, uh, what is it that would separate us from God? Do you, what, what, would you, what do you think separated you from God throughout the years? Doing everything my way. Sin separates us from God, as you know. One sin separates us. And uh, I believe you confess your sins and be honest. The Lord forgives. Um, it's, it's a great thing to know when you're serving the Lord truly and with all your heart. Uh, when you look back, as I do, where I was and where I came from, and oh, I lived a fast life, I can say. I never took drugs. My only thing I ever did... It, as soon as a sin is alcohol that's been my biggest downfall that was the hardest thing to especially when you're a bachelor i've been i've been with relationships before living with other women at, but um but i decided that i'm gonna live on my own and it's rough because uh so so you you were you had lived with different women over oh yeah. the years oh yeah many times because nobody likes to be alone so yeah, I've I've lived common law most of my life, and, but I uh, I decided no, this is not right. If you're gonna live with somebody, you should be married. So that's uh, my belief too today. I uh, yeah. So um, I I thank God because uh, a lot of times when I when I talk to different people, they say, well, I'm not really that bad a person. I'm not that bad a person. And um, my question always is, well, how, how good do you have to be or, or how bad do you have to be before uh, there's a separation between you and God? And, and you already mentioned, you said that, that just one sin separates us from God. Right. One sin. So um, all of us have sinned. So, because a lot of times we say, well, my, I'm not that bad. I'm not as bad as that person. I'm not, I'm not as, as bad as, like, I didn't do the things that Ron did. Uh, so I'm in a, a, a different, I, I can be closer to God or I can, I can access God a lot better because I'm not that bad a person. Yet, the Word of God says that we have all sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. We, one sin separates us from God. And uh, one of the things that uh, allows for there to be such change in your life uh, is, is not just the aspect of coming to church. Because there's a lot of people that can go to church in a, in a religious manner as in, hey, this is what I know that I need to do. And, uh, um, but it's not just the, 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 the ritual or the, the faithfulness of coming to church that saves us because church can't save us. The message that the church gives should save us or could save us if the message is a mes message that deals with sin and deals with what can save us. And I, I, I want to, uh, in Mark chapter 1, uh, it talks about uh, Jesus when he was here on this earth uh, 2,000 years ago. When he began his ministry at uh, 30 years of age, he said, the kingdom of God is at hand. He means the kingdom of God. You, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, it is very near. And, he, and then he said two things. And he said, repent. And repentance is, uh, there's a turning of, di in, of direction. So if you repent of your direction that you're heading in, you make a 180. So uh, we repent. Part of it has to do with the things that separate us from God is sin. There's a, a repentance, a turning from sin. And there's a turning away from that. But that's only one aspect. Now, you mentioned something about uh, the Holy Spirit convicting you. And that's maybe not a common term. What, what is the Holy Spirit convicting you uh, uh, you said convicting you of your sin. 
what, what, the, what does that mean? Well, in my terms, it's totally different. When I feel bad about myself, that's different. But when I feel the Holy Spirit, that's another thing. That's a totally different feeling whatsoever. And not only that, it's a scary feeling. When I judge myself, I'm not even worried. But when I feel the Holy Spirit convicting me, um, that's what, it's a scary thing because I think you better, I just know that that's, it moves me. And uh, like so, I, so this, this, this perhaps is fear that would come or fear of maybe a fear of God. Absolutely. I, is because of what? Like why, what, what is with that conviction? What is, what's, what's the Holy Spirit attempting to do at that, at that point is there's a conviction of sin. What is that? What does that mean? Uh, so there's a, a fear of God. W what else is it? Well, you know, um, to me, you know, I'm sure there's other people who have the same thing. Uh, it's as different as it is. I think to myself, I want to live forever. I don't. This is just temporarily. And I'm thinking, gee, when I die, just imagine. I don't want to go to hell. And that, yes, the fear of the Lord. I believe is wisdom, and uh, I believe that when the Holy Spirit convicted me, I believe I run to church and, and ask for prayer. Be in my own way, I wouldn't give a care, but I believe when the Holy Spirit convicted me, it, it shook me up. It, not like I, I would shake on my own. Like when you drink, after you drink so long, you get the shakes, <laughs> and it's not funny. But uh, yes, you if you drink uh, too much. But when you, uh, as I quit drinking, I quit drinking for a year one time, and I felt great. And I, I constantly kept thinking, and I see many people, the way their life is, I'm thinking, like you just mentioned, oh, it's not that bad. My, I'm not even living hardly as bad as this person. Ah, what's a few drinks? It's that one drink. That one drink, I can't stop at one, and I know it. There's many people maybe can, I know. That, but um, no, and I compare myself to other people that, the things that they do, and I'm thinking that's where I compare myself. But again, when, when I'm convicted with the Holy Spirit, I'm thinking, no, just remember, Ron, that one sin, and uh, that's all it takes. To, and it's so easy to get right back in that drinking. That's that's a hard, it's not hard to quit if you really pray. I'm interrupting you. Go yeah, right yeah. ahead. I, I, I want to jump before you, you you go a little bit past. But and, and you, you mentioned this, the thing of uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit saying, hey, this thing, whatever it is, this thing has to change in your life. You can't keep doing this. And there's sometimes there's a fear of God. Now, you mentioned hell. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and sin, even one sin, separates us from God. Our direction, our, our destination is hell That's right. because of sin, even just one sin. That's right. And so the Holy Spirit is coming along and there's a, not only is sin detrimental in the long term but oftentimes usually it is detrimental short term term it is always detrimental and there is really nothing good short or long term now it says there is pleasure in sin for a season but the end of this the end of, of sin results in separation from God when I, when I think of, of conviction, and I've had, we all have a, a thing of conviction uh, that may come, is it is the Holy Spirit would come and say, there, this, this thing has to change in your life. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us, especially as believers, is there to help us. Um, as a child of God, the Holy Spirit always is there to help us. Uh, if we want to do things on our own, we can. We want to attempt to change on our own. We can try, but we, well, you had 20, 30, 40 years of attempting to change on your own, and you couldn't. That's right. You couldn't. You struggled. And yet, uh, in the last little while, uh, so have you been free from the thing of alcohol? Oh, yes. No doubt about it. Uh, you do, you, do you feel good to be free from this? I can be around people. I even, people pay me by taking their empties in. And I can be around people that drink doesn't bother me at all. 
And uh, my brother, uh, God bless his heart, I'm trying so hard to pray for him. He drinks and smokes, and he, he we, we grew up in a, like I said, wellness uh, pastor's house. So he knows all about God, but he's really, he's cold right now. And he does not like to hear the word of God, and that's okay. But uh, I'm just glad that I think through the years that God's blessed me, I can, I can, maybe convict my brother a little bit. He, he will listen to me a little bit. I, I, <laughs> I, I truly believe, Ron, that, mm -hmm. uh, that because of the changes that have taken place in your life, that there is a, a witness that will come to your brother or to others to say, hey, this is what God has done for me. He can do it for you as well. So let me ask you this question. So we have sin separates us from God and say, well, we've all sinned. Uh, what, what or who uh, do we have to place our faith in to help us or to deal with the things of sin? Well, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. Um, and I believe that through our prayers in sincerity uh, that God does answer prayer. I'll, I'll give you an illustration. I told you this. My oldest brother, um, he's, he used to go to church and uh, he, he knows all about the Lord. And uh, he, uh, I believe he had that COVID-19. COVID yeah. And uh, anyway, he, uh, he had some kind of a stroke and eventually had a coma. And he, was, uh, he had three heart attacks. I went to see him, prayed, prayed. And for some reason, God blessed him. He was in there for 14 days in the Welland Hospital, and rem remarkably, he uh, today he's you wouldn't even know he was in a coma. He had three heart attacks, and he's alive. And I see him, I, and I keep t I tell him, God's blessed you. So, so when did this happen? Oh, this would be about three months ago now. Three months ago. Yeah. So, just the power of prayer. Oh yeah. And and prayer, not just random prayer, but prayer. You mentioned Jesus Christ. And I, I, want, I want to say this, and especially to those that might be listening um, online, uh, our faith cannot be in ourselves. Our faith cannot be in uh, religious traditions. Our faith can't be in, in church. It has to be in a person. And that person, Jesus Christ. And... Uh, Jesus, do you believe that Jesus uh, walked on the face of this planet? Oh, absolutely. Do you believe that Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years yes, ago? Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, do you believe that your sins were placed upon Jesus 2,000 years ago? Yes, I do, yes. Did you, um, and you might, you might say, is that even possible? Uh, Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. How can our sins be placed on him? We're 2,000 years later. Uh, God is not limited by time. God is not limited by time. He is. He exists. And when it comes to time, we are stuck in that, that, that linear uh, thing of, of, you know, that which has happened 10 minutes ago, half an hour ago, an hour ago is already history. We're moving. We're in the present and we're moving forward. God is not limited by time. And one of the things, when Jesus died for, for Ron, for you, for me, for all of, of you, all of us, all of our sins were placed upon Jesus Christ. So all of the things that, that we may have done wrong, that were contrary to God, whether we did it uh, knowingly or unknowingly, we, we, didn't, we, were, we didn't have a knowledge that... that that maybe something we're doing was even sinful. God took all of the things that he would declare as being sinful. And all of the sins were placed upon Jesus Christ. And he took the consequence and the pu punishment and, and even the separation from God as he hung on the cross. At one moment in time, as he, Jesus hung on the cross... He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why have you forsaken me, God? I believe at that moment in time, the sins of all mankind were placed on Jesus, and God the Father could not bear to see his son have, taking all of our sins, all the filth, all the, the things of, of rebellion and, and stubbornness. You mentioned pride. I, I can do it by myself. He took all of those things. You say, well, what's wrong with, with doing things on your own and being a, you know, self-sufficient and independent? We say, hey, that's, those are good traits, perhaps. But God says, hey, the, the thing of pride saying, hey, I don't need God. I can do it on my own. He took all of those things and placed them on Jesus Christ. And Jesus died for us. One day, we will stand before God. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit, we talked a little bit about conviction, is there are things in our life that we need to change. And as a believer, as our faith remains in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, that faith, and I, I want to narrow it down. Some say, well, I believe in God or I, 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 I have faith. And it's like, well, faith in what? It, it comes down to a very narrow thing, a, a single thing. And, and if your faith is not in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross in taking your sins, then your faith is in something else. We are finished. Because when we stand before God Almighty, there will be nothing else that can save us except what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross and taking our sins. If your faith is in, hey, well, my church, the fact that I belong to Lighthouse Church of God, I'm a member here, will not save you. It is your faith specifically in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on a cross 2,000 years ago because he loved us so much. That is what saves us. That is what saves us. And with that, um, there, there's been so many different things that have taken place in your life. Would you say, would you say that you're, are you, are you happy to, 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 to be free of those things from the past? And yeah, go ahead. I got to tell you, <laughs> since you've blessed me and you've helped me out through the years, living in Thorold, First, being on my own really truly for the first time when this COVID-19 came through and I was on my own I remember calling you I got this new phone you text or no you called me I was never so alone and uh, of course I never prayed a lot but uh, I had no choice and I believe that with this COVID-19 this has got to be a wake-up call because it sure woke me up too in my apartment you gave me a beautiful Bible I push myself to read because I normally I wouldn't read that much, but every day now, oh, what a blessing. I can't wait to, I just read, I read, it's the only book I got, so I got no choice to read the Bible. And I'm learning, oh, the many things I don't know, but I'm learning. And I'll tell you, what a miracle. Because before this COVID came through, I never read my Bible. So I'd come to church and hear you, listen to you. But now I got no choice, you see. And when I called, you said, well, I'll get you another book. No, I'm doing pretty good on this book right now. <laughs> so yeah, every I'm reading different chapters every day. And I may not, like I said, understand it all. Boy, I'll tell you, it's, the more you read, the more you want to just keep continuing. With, with the different things that are going on around us, uh, and I know so it, it, it can be a, a, a fearful thing, um, would you say... Like, are you afraid? To, are you afraid to die? Oh, no, not now. So, so you're not afraid to die. So where do you figure you're going to end up? You mentioned he heaven. You mentioned hell. Where are you going to end up? Well, you know, it says to die is to gain, to live is for Christ. And that's what I believe. That's where I am right now. I'm, I'm looking forward to die. But if I live now, I want to live for Christ and bring all I can with me. I so, want to be a perfect witness. I can do it now. It's I'm standing out in faith. There I have a right ahead there, Pastor. So, so there's this, uh, the thing of, of a, a, a complete assurance. Oh, yes. there's, there's a scripture in Romans uh, 8, I think it's verse 15 or 16. It says that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes. His spirit bears witness or lets our spirit know that we are children of God. So would you say you're a child of God? Absolutely. No doubt so, in my mind. Which means if you're a child of God, that makes God your father. Yes. So you have, you had an earthly father that passed away when you were just a little boy, but 
you gave your life to Jesus. It says in, in John 1, verse 12 and 13, I, I alluded to it earlier, that if we receive him, as many as received him, and, and this him is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to them he gave the power to become the children of God, even to those that believe on his name, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Your faith is in Jesus Christ. And it says, who are not born of flesh or the will of man or of blood, but are born of God. Are, they're born of God. And so we become children of God, even as our faith is in Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, so I want to read a passage here. Ron, this, 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 the other day when I was listening to your story, and I it was just like, and, and there are so many things that, Ron, you didn't say. Okay. You, you didn't say certain things, and I, that's, that's fine. But, but I, it was like, my goodness, the bondage and the, the, uh, the confinement that you were in because of sin. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but this passage here in Psalm 40, it says, I, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. And this next verse really was what was the verse that, that came to my mind when I thought about you. It says, he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. When you're in the miry clay, it's like you can't, you can't get out. You're stuck. He brought me out of, out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He put me on solid ground. He has put a new song in my heart, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And I know sometimes uh, uh, when there's a, there's a joy about us, it's like, thank you, Lord. And, and, and what you've taken me out of from where I am now, we, there's just a thanksgiving, a, a new song of praise that would go up to the Lord. Lord, my trust is in you. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, done for you, Ron, done for me, done for, for all of us as we would place our faith in him. Many are the works which you have done, wonderful works, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Now, I want to say this to each and every one of you, those here, uh, those that are listening uh, online, that God knows you. God knows you, and he loves you. And the thoughts that he has for you are for good. His heart is that we would be his children. And we are his children as we receive Jesus Christ into our lives. As we would admit, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. You died for me. Come into my life. As there would be a, a confession of this and a faith in Jesus Christ, we have salvation. And he is able. Listen, if, if you are in a horrible pit and you say, how can I ever get out of this? Give your life over to the Lord Jesus. Allow him to take you out of this miry clay. Allow him to take you and put you on a solid ground to give you life. Life now and abundant. And I, I, the, the thing that, others, that stands out here is you said, I couldn't live alone. I couldn't live. I always was with somebody, right, yeah. living with somebody. And here, this, the last year or so, You've been living on your own. It was a huge change that took place in your life. I, I needed, you needed to make things right before the oh, Lord. Yes, yes. And you made a huge change. You say, I'm living on my own at this point. I'm right. I, they're, they're, hey, I'm getting close to the Lord. And, and we don't know, Ron, down the, down the road, what, what the Lord has in store for you. Maybe, yeah, maybe to, to have a wife and, and all that should he tarry. But at this time, you have the Lord is the most important thing because in him you have life, you have forgiveness of sins, you have eternity ahead of you with him. Like you said, hey, you almost want to die. I want to go to heaven. Right now. Uh, right now, and let's peace go. peace of mind. What's that? Peace of mind. A peace of mind. Peace of mind, yeah. Absolutely. Praise oh. God for that. We want to uh, close. And um, 
I just, I want to pray a prayer. And, and maybe if there's anybody here, I, I would be remiss if I don't give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. And maybe you are in a spot where, you're, where life is, is extreme or difficult, uh, and you say, how can I get out? The Lord can set you free. He can set you free, and he can give you new life. And so I, I want to pray a prayer uh, at this time. And, and if you could help with, with me as I pray, and we're going to pray also for those that are joining, on us, uh, joining with us online, uh, a prayer of faith. We'll be doing th three things that the Lord would have us do. Confess, I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. Number two, but Jesus took all my sins upon himself and he died for me. Well, we're going to confess this and believe this in our heart. Jesus said if you confess and, and you believe that Jesus died for you and rose again, you will be saved. And the third thing is to invite Jesus into your life, that he would be a part of your life, not that it would just be a one-time thing. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of new life and eternal life to make it to God. So could we just bow our heads at this time? We're going to pray this prayer. Uh, and if you're uh, joining online especially, uh, to pray this prayer by faith. Jesus, yeah, if you could just say, say with me, Jesus, I am in the miry clay. I'm in a horrible pit. And I can't get out. I confess that I have sinned. I am a sinner. But you took all of my sins upon yourself. All the sins that I've committed and all that I may commit in the future, you took upon yourself. My heart is not to sin, but to live for you. You died for me. And you were buried. And you rose again. You overcame death and hell. And you overcame the power of sin. I invite you into my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you pray that prayer for the first time, uh, let me know you're here today and you say, hey, I, I pray, pray that for the first time, let me know. Uh, or you can, uh, if you go to pastor at lighthouseniagara.com, you can just send me an email. Uh, I want to continue to pray for you. It, this is just the beginning. It is the beginning of, of new life uh, with the Lord. And uh, he's got plans and purposes for you that are so amazing. So many of you are, have experienced that recently. So a number of you have ex are, are known that. So many of you have known that for so much of your life. You realize the goodness of the Lord. He is faithful even in the midst of COVID. The Lord is faithful. He is all-powerful, and he sees us through. Jesus is coming back soon, and uh, that we would be prepared, just like Ron says, I'm ready to go right now. Uh, that we would be ready to go. Uh, I'm going to close in prayer. I want to pray a prayer blessing upon you all. Jesus, uh, I just thank you for all those that are here, those that are online with us today. Lord, I pray blessing on them that you would reveal yourself powerfully to them. Lord, that the peace of God that passes all understanding would keep their heart and their mind, even in the midst of the things that we may be going through, the storms of life, whatever it may be, Lord, you will see us through. And I pray that there would be that assurance in every heart that the faith, their faith would not falter, would be stronger and stronger in you and your demonstration of love and going to the cross for us. Lord, their faith would be in that. For, for their salvation, not just for the things of eternity, but even for today to, to help us through the things that we might face today. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. 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 May God bless you today.